Ashwa going in under Holly Doyle. Frankie will complete the line. Mostadaf moving in. Stand by. They're all in. They're off. The four superstars break from the stalls. Nashua, in no great haste, restrained. The Foxes drops out in last place. And Mostadaf bounces out with an advantage of a couple of lengths, leading Paddington through the first furlong of the £1 million Group 1 Judmont International. Frankie in front and with an uncontested lead early on. And it's single file stuff with Paddington in run, Moore's hands taking the trail in second. Nashua racing in third under Holly Doyle and the Foxes. And Asheen Murphy looking on last of the quartet. At around about 36, 37 miles an hour, they move down towards the final seven furlongs. So Frankie glancing in behind aboard Mostadaf. He's got a lead now three lengths or so. Paddington is chasing two lengths away to Nashua. The dark green silks and the fox is under heavy restraint to the back of the field. They enter the last three quarters of a mile and begin the swing back towards home and on towards halfway. And Frankie setting decent fractions here on Mostadaf. He has an advantage of three lengths over Paddington. A further two lengths away to Nashua and the Foxes are halfway, remains last of the quartet and they're around about 38 miles an hour as Mostadaf leads them to the top of the home straight and the last half mile in sight. And again, Frankie has a look in behind. You'll see that Ryan Moore is now just asking Paddington to go after Mostadaf to try and close. The gap is still a three lengths. Two lengths away to Nashua and the Foxes remains last of four and again Frankie has a long lingering look in behind aboard Mostadaf. He's leading him down towards the last two and a half furlongs and Moore is now crouching low on Paddington. He gets to within two lengths. Frankie asks Mostadaf for more. Can Paddington get past? Nashua on the right is staging a challenge. The Foxes back in fourth. Mostadaf on down towards the last furlong. Paddington though pressing hard under the Moore drive. Nashua trying to burrow through against the rail. Mostadaf, Paddington leaning left. He got to his quarters. Can he get past? Frankie in front, punching away. Mostadaf, and it's a record-breaking Judmont International success for Frankie on his farewell. Mostadaf beat Nashua, Paddington only third, and the Fox is back in fourth. With that success in the Judmont International, Frank Dettori has become the most successful jockey in the history of the race with that exquisite front-running ride on the Stardef. In your own words, how did that work out? Uh, brilliant. Uh, you know, sorry for Jim that he's suspended, but he helped me out a lot. He told me the characteristic of the horse. I threw a few ideas to him and he helped me. I spoke to John last night and uh, I said, John, you know, in my mind, the only way to beat Paddington is a champion three-year-old. He's been front of him because we give him seven pounds and if we're behind him, we're never gonna get past him. So, he jumped brilliant. The only thing I had to do is just get a fraction right and I did. Maybe after 36 years, <laughs> I've <ever> learned. <laughs> How big a call is that to front run in a race this big for the first time in the horse's career? It was a big call, but he's a five-year-old. I studied his races. I mean, he's run a mile and a half a few times. And uh, until the last further, it was a good second to the Exynox. The only thing when you try something like that, they don't get lost in front. Mm -hmm. But he's got cheek pieces, he's a five year old, and uh, you know, he seems very professional. You know, look, until you try, you don't know, but you know, if I was going to be Paddington, and it's uh, me being in front of him. Was it a bit reminiscent of Halling, your first victory in this race? Ah, they're all different, you know. Uh, this was exquisite because uh, obviously nobody expects us to win. With a great Paddington, amazing free was won five, group one straight, and. Uh, you know, to, it was a great performance. Fantastic. Quick, quickest time since See the Stars is international states, I, by the way. I, I, I didn't mess it out. No, I know you didn't. <laughs> you, know, you, I had to add, you know, it's basically keep the reps on the edge. Not overdo it so you don't die. And don't underdo it so they catch you. So you know, just to get it right, but I had a good partner that he did everything, everything I asked in every stage of the race and uh, he worked out. Was this one of the ideas that you threw at Jim as well, the front running? Yes, yes, I did. And uh, he, he went through it with me, and uh, he kind of agreed with me. You know, with Nashua and the Fox coming from behind, it was basically, it was a cut and mouse race, and uh, whoever won the battle to get to the front had the, the, the force in hand, and I did. How good do you think this horse is? Well, I don't have to say. He's won a Prince of Wales by four and a job on International, so super, super horse. Second and best I, middle distance horse he is, uh, according to ratings behind Equinox. Yeah, absolutely. Look, uh, I'm not going to criticise anyone, but I think now they got it right, and a mile and a quarter is definitely his distance. Okay. And
how much satisfaction does it give you to execute a winning ride on this stage in that manner? Oh, very much. It reminds me uh, a bit of uh, uh, Roberto and Brigitte Gerard. So uh, when he comes off, I'm super proud, of course. Many congratulations. We've just seen a thrilling Judmont International and John Gosden supplied the winner and the second in Mustardef and Nashua. Such a compelling race to watch and those tactics on Mustardef, the thing that changed everyone's expectations. Can you run through how they were brought to life between you and Frankie? Yeah, very much so because we discussed it and Frankie discussed it with Richard Hills and um, the thing was Frankie watched all the races, he's ridden them in work and w what was clear that Ryan if he went to the front, would naturally set a pace to go forward, to ease it up, get a breather and go again. It would have suited his horse. And we thought the one way to take him on is to do what Braleo Bayadso did on Roberto and just come out the gate and find a lovely rhythm, but tick, tick it off in 12, what we call 12 and change for the furlong. And therefore, it's a solid, solid pace. And this is a track that if someone does that, it'll tap the stamina behind, but also they're quite hard to catch. And it was just a tactically brilliant ride. I mean, he came from last in the Prince of Wales, mm. and Jim got it right there. Sorry, Jim couldn't ride him today, but I think he'd be happy with Super Sub. <laughs> and uh, no, it was a, a brave horse and a great performance. So he's done it always. You know. And in terms of the horse being ready to change those taxes, because he's never done it before, were you no. confident that he'd be fine? I was confident that uh, with Frankie on board, that the horse, we, we've worked him from the front three or four times. And he's, been, he's worked nicely on the bridle, nothing like that, obviously. So I knew he's comfortable in front. And I said, Frankie, you've got all the options. And you never tell a top jockey in any race, let alone a small field, what to do. You give them a blank canvas. And that's where they can express themselves, feel the horse, and do what they think's right. And this horse is beginning to define himself, isn't he, in terms of what he is. That strongly run, 10 furlongs, fast ground, when he's fresh, he is quite brilliant at that. Yes, absolutely. He showed that in Saudi Arabia. He'd always shown us glimpses before. And look, in fairness, I was stupid. I went around him in heavy, heavy ground at Longshore. You're lucky he survived that, you know. And the ground has gone against him a few times, but he's, he's, some horses reach their absolute zenith at certain points. He was a good two, a good three-year-old, good four-year-old, but he's excellent now. And where now? Good question. See how he is. Give it 10 days. Let the horse tell us. We'll discuss it. You know, you've got Irish champions, you've got Breeders' Cups. I worry that Champions Day, which I think is a fabulous day's racing, is often in soft ground, but then I worry the same thing for Longshore. Very quick last word on Nashua, a brilliant second. Yeah, look, it went wrong in the Nassau, got a long way back off, no pace and sticky ground, hard to make up that ground. And, I, you know, it's a little frustrating for us all. I didn't want to go to Dover in that not very nice ground in the Romane on Sunday. I said, let's run here. Imad El Sagar, the owner and breeder, was very game. He said, we must support the racing. We're going to run here. And she's shown a class today. Brilliant run to be second. She really has. Well, many, many congratulations. Such a superb race that you and Frankie were the architects of. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. And Cheka Hissa was on hand to see Mustadaf deliver probably a career-defining performance when winning the International States of Race, of course, that she won last year with the brilliant Baid. My, that was marvellous, wasn't it? What a great race to watch. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. I did not expect him to make the running. <laughs> but, um, yeah, very brave ride from Frankie. And he trusted the horse. He tried him before, so that was good. That was great. And the horse has never made the running, I mean, I'm not surprised you were surprised, because the horse has never made the running before. What does that say about his quali quality of mind to be able to do that for the first time on such a big stage? So I think Frankie let him do what he wanted to do, and he's that, that type of horse. If he wants to go, you just let him do what he wants to do. And uh, not to interfere with him, he prefers that anyways. But to see him in front when, with a small feet, I mean, it could have been a chance that that would happen, but... And what were you thinking in the straight with Paddington bearing down and with Nashua bearing down as well? Give us an idea of your thoughts. Um, I was stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I was very stressed because uh, I wanted him to quicken more and more. And obviously they were going, what, 38 miles an hour, mm. 30, close to 40 after 40 by the end. So, no, that was a brave ride. It was the quickest time since See the Stars, the mighty See the Stars won this race, so he got the fractions beautifully up front. Tell me about this horse. Do you go and have you been to see him at home a few times? I have, I have. Um, he's homebred, so we've seen plenty of him. Um, I get videos all the time from Richard and the team um, when they work. I enjoy to see that if I'm not here. So uh, he, he's a horse that likes to act in a typical way, and we like to see that just for him to um, stay up to momentum. 
And did you always expect him to be able to reach this standard? Because, of course, at the start of last year, he was the sort of, you know, the, the coming horse in many ways, wasn't he? Um, did, what, what were you expecting from him this season? After his run in Saudi Arabia, um, I expected him to do better and better. Even the September stakes, he ran very well. He, he ran beautifully in Saudi Arabia, winning the Neon Cup. And he ran bravely behind the uh, Equinox. And, well, he's an improving horse. And this family usually takes time to improve. Mm -hmm. So I did expect him to do well. And we're happy he won the Judmont. That was the plan. <laughs> well, it was marvellous to see. Many congratulations on your back-to-back -back wins in the race and another brilliant horse. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. The magnificent Paddington has just met his first defeat of the season in the International. He's finished third. His trainer, Aidan O'Brien, will also chat to him about the great Volta Joe winner, Continuous, who was really impressive. Start with Paddington, though. What's your immediate reaction? Yeah, maybe it was just a race too much, Lydia. Um, he had a tough race the last day. Um, he had to fight her off twice the last day in soft ground and maybe it was a race too much and maybe I just pushed him a little bit too far maybe I should have waited and went to Leperstown give him a little bit more time to recover but listen, that's the way it is and, and uh, this knee is only a baby three year old and, and he did have a grueler the last day as well you know. so listen, um, Brian felt he was just a little bit flat um, but listen, still ran a good race so um, that's, that's the way it is Presumably he'd still been showing you the same thriving though at home that had caused you to map out this campaign. Yes, yeah, he was in good form, Lydia, but when a horse is racing that much, that close, races, you don't overlook at them at home, if you know what I mean, you know, and uh, listen, um, obviously we were happy for him to come here, um, and that's why he was here, but when you don't really know until kind of the speedometer goes to red, if you know what I mean, you know, so, uh, and... Uh, Frankie like, went even and strong all the way and, and Ryan just said he, he didn't travel with his usual fluency and maybe, like I say, maybe it was a race too much, um, you know, but listen, um, he still ran very well. Would you still be hopeful to go to the Irish champion next? Yeah, I don't think so. He definitely won't go to the Irish champion after that, Lydia. Uh, listen, I, I don't know what the lads will do. It'll, it'll depend on what they'll want to do. But listen, sometimes you can stretch the elastic band too much. Right. Do you understand? So and, the break and is what you're basically saying. Yeah, I'm not saying anything, Lydia, but he is only a baby three-year-old and he, he, like he's had like we have fairly given it to him now we've backed him up fairly tough and, and he did have a tough one the last day you know so um no so listen he ran very well and um listen you know we, we'll see but uh, I, I would have to say maybe i shouldn't have ran him maybe i should have given him more time but listen that's the way okay watch live racing now on racingtv.com